Okay, as I said, I'm Steve Shea, and we're going to talk about Dr. Losey and the Naval Classification System today. Um, this is a presentation I first made in 2014. I think I gave it at Westpex first. I gave it at the convention later that year. And I've modified it a few times through the years, and uh, most recently, I extensively modified it uh, just this last month. So... If you've seen it before, you will be seeing some new, new material today. This is Dr. Losey, uh, Lieutenant Francis Eastman Losey to be specific in this picture, 1918, uh, World War I period. Dr. Losey was born in uh, 1889, Lake, Lake Forest, Illinois a son of a William Losey and Alan Eastman, both of which are buried in Flint, Michigan. Uh, his dad passed away while Losey was still alive. His mother outlived Dr. Losey. Years ago, I stumbled on to uh, the Leelanau, Michigan Historical Society online, and I found some Losey information, amazingly enough. Uh, this is a picture, it's not high quality, unfortunately, but uh, that's Dr. Losey on the left in this photo. That's his mother on the right in this photo. And 1907, so Losey would have been 17 at this time. So it's a pretty early picture of him. Um, turns out the Losey's had a vacation cabin up in the, that part of Michigan. And that's why this uh, society has some Losey information. found this from the same source. Uh, it's an essay Losey did at age 17, talking about one of his family trips to that part of Michigan. Uh, this is Losey's handwriting. This is uh, his actual essay that he wrote for school. Uh, in, in this, he happens to talk about sailing an 18 foot sloop. So he did have some naval interest, or at least sailing interest at the time. Uh, a couple years later, another essay he prepared for school uh, talks about another family trip. Uh, this one's sort of interesting. He talks about uh, visiting an Indian graveyard in this one. So it's kind of some neat early Losey stuff. Losey attended uh, the Evanston Academy. That was a prep school uh, run by Northwestern University, attended 1909-1910. And uh, these are class photos of Losey. So again, some early pictures of Dr. Losey before he became a doctor. He attended Northwestern University. Um, while he was attending school there, he was a member of the Phi Rho Sigma fraternity and he graduated in 1915. He opened a doctor's office specializing in ear, nose and throat in Evanston, Illinois. And then a couple of years later, he enrolled in the Naval Reserve. He was given the provisional rank of assistant surgeon, uh, rank of Lieutenant JG, and he was attached to the 9th, 10th, and 11th Naval Districts in the Great Lakes area of Illinois. Another picture I found online, uh, I only included because of the nautical interest. He's certainly sitting in a little small boat and just kind of thought they were kind of neat pictures, uh, 1915. It's a newspaper article, um, it has the same photo that we started the presentation with. Um, as the caption says, he's wearing the smart uniform of overseas service, uh, 1918 for World War I service. He was assigned to the 6th Regiment of Marines at Quantico in September, 1917. Uh, the 6th Regiment in turn was attached to the 4th Brigade of the 2nd U.S. Army Division, which was part of the Army Expeditionary Forces in uh, France in late 1917. While he was with them, he was promoted from Lieutenant JG to full Lieutenant in March 1918. And he participated in battles in Bella Wood in late May and early June 1918 as the battalion surgeon of the 1st Battalion, 6th Regiment of Marines. Some of us may collect military insignia and soldier, shoulder patches. 
This is the actual shoulder patch, a photo of one. I don't own one. This is the shoulder patch that Losi would have worn. Uh, the star and the Indian represent the second army division. And then the red color was specific to the 6th Marine Re Regiment, 1st Battalion. So this is very unique to Losi's organization. Losi was a prolific writer. I have a number of letters addressed from him to his mother. This is one here, uh, 1918, June 1918. Uh, you can see the corner card, F.E. Losey, Provisional Assistant Surgeon, USN, 1st Battalion, 6th Marines. Uh, he self-censored it, lower left-hand corner. Uh, interestingly, you can see he's uh, signed it as Francis Losey, Provisional Assistant Surgeon, but also Captain Marine Corps which would have been the equivalent rank. Uh, probably did that so that somebody could easily tell that he was an officer censoring the mail, since probably not everybody would know what a PA surgeon meant. His war service was fairly interesting. Um, the unit was attacking some enemy machine gun nests in June of 1918 and Losi operated a dressing station in a culvert under a highway that was exposed to enemy fire. And while he was doing this, he was under fire for 30 hours, dressing wounds of his fellow Marines. The gas destroyed his clothes. And when it was all over, he went to the base hospital. He was wearing nothing but pajamas, his helmet and boots. And for those actions, he received the Navy Cross, which is a fairly significant award. For his actions during the war, he was authorized to wear a silver star on the victory medal, which everybody who participated in the war received. The silver star was for gallantry in action. Again, fairly nice award. The 6th Marines, as a unit, were awarded the French Croix de Guerre, and Losi received his with a silver gilt star, denoting courage, skill, and devotion to duty under violent artillery fire. And he received that for his actions directing regimental aid stations during operations in Champaign, Champaign area in October 1918. These are some newspaper articles talking about the gassing that I was just talking about. A nice photo of him, and this time he's wearing a Navy uniform. Very nice picture. He was transferred to the 2nd Battalion. I have this as a cover and uh, his return address on the back, denoting he was now no longer the 1st Battalion, but in the 2nd Battalion of the 6th Marines. And here's a letter again to his mother. Uh, this is after the war, February 1919, so uh, about, uh, what, three, four months after the war. Uh, Knights of Columbus Stationary Army of Occupation in Germany. Uh, signed as Dr. Losey, Lieutenant uh, Medical Corps, U.S. Navy, 6th Marines. APO 710 would have been the U.S. Army 2nd Division, which is what the Marines were attached to. And he self-censored it down in the lower left-hand corner. Another letter from him, again, Knights of Columbus Stationary, June of 1919. Uh, again, APO 710. Even though he little, mistyped it a little bit in his uh, corner card, it says 71C, as he hit the C instead of the zero character. And again to his mother, and again self-censored down on the left. After his service uh, in part of the Army of Occupation, he transferred back to the United States in August of 1919. He was then detached from the 6th Marines and stationed aboard the USS Pennsylvania, the battleship Pennsylvania, September 1919. Six months, seven months later, he was detached to the Naval Hospital in Washington. Then he went on to the Naval Medical School in May of 1920. And then another seven months later, he moved to the Naval Hospital in Great Lakes, Illinois in January 1921. 
is a postcard, a penny postcard he sent to his mother uh, while he was on the Pennsylvania. So it's got a nice 1919 USS Pennsylvania cancel. Uh, in, in the postcard, he says he'd received a postal today. Everything was okay. Uh, he says he's out of stationery and he's going to buy some more so he can write some more letters. Uh, living quietly and enjoying a nice rest. So I guess probably after the war aboard a battleship, that was a bit of a nice rest. Another cover from Pennsylvania uh, to his mother again. This time his corner card says he's in Barbados, February 1920. Nice USS Pennsylvania cancel. And yet another USS Pennsylvania cover, March 1920. Uh, this time he knows he's in Media Luna Key in Cuba. And again, it's a letter to his mother. Losey married a Jesse Judd in 1921. They would have two sons, a William and a John, born 1922, 1927. Uh, I found it a little bit strange. Uh, this John Losey actually only died a year ago. Well, until I found this recently, I didn't even know he was married and had kids. And I was very surprised to see that one of them just passed away a year ago. Uh, they lived in Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania for some time. We'll see this address on a number of covers later. This is actually the house they lived in at 936 Cornell Avenue in Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. Continuing his service history, he was um, attached to the USS Mercy in October, 1923. Moved on to duty at the Naval Hospital League Island, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in November 1924. And we'll see that posting would occur several times during his career. He would be at that hospital. Um, from there, he was attached to the USS Trenton, January 1925. Uh, this is a postcard that he sent to his mother. Uh, from the corner card, we can see he's in Lahaina, Hawaii, May of 25 and all is well and see you probably by the first. So I guess they must have been on their way back to the States. Losey was a stamp collector. And here we have a very early cover, uh, cover he sent to the Scott Stamps and Coin Company, 1924, while he was aboard the USS Mercy. Uh, just barely see it in the uh, killer of ours, but uh, and see the ship was in Cuba at the time. He received a promotion in June of 25, became a commissioned surgeon with the rank of Lieutenant Commander. And back to that hospital I mentioned a minute ago, the Naval Hospital League Island of uh, Philadelphia. And this is a cover he sent from there. Uh, you can see that in the corner card. Cancellation reads U.S. Naval Hospital League Island. And on this cover, he's noted that this was the first day I used for this particular cancellation. The cover is sent to a Walter Lester. And we'll talk about Mr. Lester later on as we get into some of the correspondence from Losey. While at League Island, he was sending for covers. Mostly had started becoming interested in naval cancellations, and this is a cover he sent to the USS Mayflower. This is how he was getting his, his covers at the time. Sorry about that. I just had a pop up here. Got to go back. Sorry. There we go. This is a cover sent to him by a sailor aboard the USS Helena in the Asiatic fleet. Uh, a nice, what we would call today, a type nine cancel. Uh, it's actually an hard run rated cancel, a hundred or less copies known, addressed to low sea at the hospital at uh, Lee Island. There's a cover he sent for, canceled aboard the Mercy, the ship he was on. 
you notice the two green stamps, they may not look familiar to you if you collect US stamps and they aren't familiar because they're Cuban postage. This is a unofficial first day cover. It's an Albert Gorham cachet sent to Losi, canceled aboard the destroyer USS Reed. Uh, this was the first day of issue for the International Civil Aerospace Conference stamps. Uh, this is one of the two stamps. There's a two center and a five center. And it's back stamped with the hospital uh, cancellation and received, received date. This is another unofficial first day cover. Uh, first day of the Valley Forge stamp. Losey sent it to his son the elder son, John, John Losey. And you can see the address here is the Cornell Ave Avenue address that I showed the picture of the house on. Uh, I wanna mention the pencil markings we see here, the sunk and the FDI. These would have been markings that a Chester Nelson wrote on his covers. And Chester we'll talk about later in the best, uh, presentation, but. Chester bought the Losi collection at one time, and he had special little marks he put on covers and he wrote on covers, and that's why I've left these because I know who did them. So it's kind of interesting. Losi was a collector. Losi was sent in for covers just like many of us do. Here's one he sent to the cruiser Richmond in 1928. And just like many of us do today, he noted on the back, he got this one on May, 3rd, uh, May 31st, 1928. So I can see from the cancel, it was May 15th. So it took about two weeks for him to get this cover. It was during this point in his career, about into February, 1929. This is when he wrote the article we're gonna talk about. This was the article where he published his classification system. And we'll get to that pretty soon. Another one of his covers, nice USS Bruce, clean cancel. August 1929, he moved from the Naval Hospital and he was assigned duty in Port-au-Prince as part of the 1st Brigade USS Marines, US Marines. He sent covers out informing his friends and fellow collectors that he was being stationed in Port-au-Prince cover that he sent to a Dr. William, e William Evans. You may recognize the name Dr. Evans, early collector. You can see his name on a number of early covers from the late 20s. Uh, Losey's corner card was on the back and he notes it was USS Kittery, the ship that was taking him there. This is the enclosure. And this was in essence, his change of address note to his friends. Uh, in, in the note, he notes that U.S. Navy ship covers are a specialty correspondence solicited. And as I mentioned earlier, he was, seems to have been a prolific writer. And we're going to see some of his correspondence later. Cover posted while he was in Haiti. See the corner card is now Port-au-Prince. And it's a USMC cancel, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. October 1929, sent to, doc, uh, to Mr. Lester. Again, the collector we'll talk about later. Somebody Lucy corresponded regularly with. Another cover, Lucy sent it to somebody, has a nice clean USMC Port-au-Prince cancel. A letter to his mother from uh, Port au Prince. You can see what we would call a type six cancel USMC Port au Prince Haiti. Sent it via airmail. Also, short of postage, so his mother had to pay four cents postage due to get this from him. Another letter home to his mom. This one's interesting because it traveled via the SS Cristobal. So it's got a nice packed boat cancel. And an Haiti uh, stamp. Still during his service in uh, Haiti, 1931, 
mails from another collector to Losi on a Navy Day, 1931. Navy. Here is a Christmas card. Sorry. Christmas card that he sent to friends. Uh, shows a picture of Losi in front of the post office at Port au Prince, uh, 1931. This is addressed to J.B. Merritt. Some of you may know that name, may not know that name. Mr. Merritt was a civilian working in the Navy building and he salvaged a lot of official envelopes and he made cut squares out of them. You can find advertisements from Mr. Merritt where he was selling his cut squares for 25 cents. So another early collector. And January 32, he was sent back to be stationed at the Naval Hospital, Navy uh, at League Island in Philadelphia. So we're gonna take a little break from his service career. And we're gonna talk a little bit more now about his philatelic interests. He joined the APS, the American Philatelic Society in May, 1927. This is his application. They received it in April. As the APS does, they publish names of applicants in their journal. It shows they published it in May and they admitted him to the society in July. So this is how Losi got into the APS. Around this time, people were starting to collect naval covers and get an understanding in naval covers. This is an article by that Dr. Evans, William Evans, published in the American Philatelist, August, 1927. It's probably one of the very first articles naval cancels. And uh, in this particular article, he talks about how a Harry Conweiser had learned that the post office was, were first authorized to board ships in 1908. So to us today, that's pretty common knowledge. But in 1927, that was newfound knowledge. So maybe it was 20 years after cancels were put aboard, but nobody had really realized when they got started. Uh, the article speculates that maybe the first cancellations occurred as early as June 1908. Uh, some of us may know the history of 1908 cancels, and I think the earliest 1908 cancels actually in December. But again, it's it kind of it's a neat article. You can see how people are starting to learn and dive into the history of naval covers and what they didn't know and what we're learning at the time. February 1928, an article in the Stamp Collectors Magazine. So this is an article by William Hornbeck. And he was writing in a sec in a section of pack boat and sea post cancellations. So it wasn't even naval cancellations, it was just maritime cancellations. Nice little article about how he's discovered naval cancels. Uh, on the right, you can see one of his pages from his album, similar to what a lot of people do today. They put a cover and a picture of the ship. In this case, he put a cut square and a picture of the ship. Some of you may know the name William Hornback. If you watch movies, he was a film editor. He's probably most famous for the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, which is probably starting to show on TV this time of year. He's also a film editor for the Scarlet Pimpernel and the Barefoot Contessa. And he was actually an Academy Award winner. So somebody that we know as a movie mogul was also a naval cover collector back in 1928. Here's a little letter from a Losi to the William Lester. We saw one of his covers earlier. Uh, this is a letter from Losi saying he's glad to hear there's a sea post unit being established in the APS. He's been in the Navy about 11 years, never tried to collect cancellations until recently. He's trying to join the unit and he's enclosed his 50 cents so he can join the sea post unit. If you notice, while the stationary is from the Naval Hospital, he signed it just simply as a Francis Losey MD. It's 
quite common in his correspondent. He did not, he didn't note that he was a Lieutenant Commander, didn't usually note his Naval Association. It was just simply Dr. Losi or Losi MD. And as is common with some of his correspondents, it seems like he was always trying to trade covers. In this case, he's saying he has a few duplicates and he knows, notes a USS Detroit and a USS Mercy cover, trying to generate a trade. This is a cover from Losey to that William Lester. And now we're to April, 1928. Another Dr. Williams um, article, this time in the Southern Philatelist. This is one is an interesting article. He is trying to start a classification system himself. And this four or five page article he discusses what he's calling types. So he's assigning type numbers to cancels. And he even has a little bit of a survey on the quantities of covers. This is the next page of that article. And you can see he on this page, he has types, what he's called type one through type 10. Now I think to many of us on this meeting, we would recognize that there's some type ones and maybe type twos and some type threes and a type F probably, but he's given even the ones that look very similar such as down at the bottom. He gave the USS Orion a type nine and he gave the Mori a type 10. The San Francisco, a couple cancels above that, he gave us a type six. These are types 11 through 22. So I think if you look at this and start thinking about it, you can kind of see why this would have been a hard classification system to master. You've got a lot of type numbers. You've got types being associated with very similar looking cancellations. It's sort of hard to tell what the difference between some of the cancellations are. And you've already, at this point in time, he's got 22 numbers assigned. As a matter of fact, on the last page of his article, he goes as high as 23. So he's already got 23 different types of cancels. This is where he does have a neat little survey. He's noting that in 1924, the distribution of ships, you know, there were 90 ships that had what he called a type six. 15 ships had what he called a number 19 cancel. Very good effort. The first of its kind, as far as I know. It probably inspired Losi to some, some extent, but I think we can probably see why he didn't make the cut and why we aren't using it today. It's just too many types to remember, too many details to remember to keep things straight. And this is why I say this. We recognize all of these as what we would call Losi type threes. But just on this page, there are seven different types in the evidence system. Pretty hard to tell the difference between the Lebanon and the Orion or even the San Francisco. They all look pretty similar, yet he's given them different type numbers. And this is a cover from Losi to Dr. Evans, the same guy who wrote that article we were talking about. This is an unofficial first day cover for the Beacon stamp, the C-11, um, canceled aboard the battleship Oklahoma. And as I said, sent by Losi to Dr. Evans. And Losi at this time was really becoming a collector and really starting to study cancels, sending the ships, getting different cancels back. Here's a couple, USS Vega and the Sturdivant, 1928. A nice Asiatic fleet, USS Truxton, 1928. Ship was at Shefu, China at the time. Real nice cancel, USS Macaulay. Today we give this an R1 rating, less than hundred copies of it known. But you can see Losi's starting to gather different cancels from different ships probably starting to 
think in his head, boy, we got to figure out how we're going to classify these things, how we can keep them all straight. Nice cover from the Mercy. And he's noted on this one, this is the first day of use for this, this particular cancel, which we would today call type five. Another Asiatic fleet, USS Perry, Shifu, China. And Losi hit the same problem that some of you guys probably hit today with over cancels. Very nice USS Kane cancel, what we would call a type nine. Uh, actually, we, today we rate that as an R1, 100 or less copies, but in the mail stream, got a Brooklyn, New York over stamp. And this is Losi's writing. This is what happened last time. So I guess this has happened to him on other occasions. As we've seen, he had a number of covers that were unofficial first day covers. And that just kind of shows us that he had more than naval cover interest. He collected stamps, obviously knew something about first day of issue. These are two here. The upper left is actually a double unofficial first day cover. It's the first day of the Valley Forge stamp on the right of that cover, and the first day of the Molly Pitcher on the left of that cover. Uh, Battleship Oklahoma cancel on one and the hospital cancel on the other. And then the lower cover is an official first day canceled aboard the Mercy for the uh, Molly Pitcher stamp. And he knew something about airmail rates. This is a letter to his mom from the Battleship Arkansas, nice flag type A cancel, but it's also the first day of the new airmail rate, five cent airmail rate that day. Still gathering cancels, 1928, couple what we would call type nine cancels, USS Hart, USS Bushnell. Nice Asiatic fleet, USS General Lava, Shanghai, China, sent to him when he was working at the hospital. This is also an R1 rated cancel. Another unofficial first day, the the uh, two I mentioned earlier, the two aerospace conference stamps. This one has the, both the two center and the five center. Canceled aboard the Niagara. And here we are, October 28. He's writing a letter to an SD Forester. And in this letter, Lucy mentions the Doan cancellation classification system that was used for civilian post offices. And he notes that he has 275 ship cancels, express an interest in trading rather than selling. And he also notes that he's compiled a list of 680 ships that have had or have post offices, as well as 100 receiving ships, fleets, and squadrons. So you can see he's really starting to get into this hobby. And again, as we heard earlier, he'd really just started and he's really getting into, in essence, making lists of where what ships had cancels. And as we'll see, he's starting to make a list of what cancels were on those very ships. Here's a letter to that C.S. Williams. And we can see that the bottom half of the letter, he's talking about different types of cancels. And he's actually drawn what they would look like so he can help explain what he's talking about. Uh, he's, he mentions a classification system that had dozens of types. It's probably the Evans classification system we saw. And he notes that he doesn't think there are that many. So you can see he was already thinking and probably along the same lines I've been mentioning that Evans classification ships system was a little too complicated. So he's probably starting to think how he can simplify it. Also in this letter, he notes he doesn't want to give up his list of cancellations for publication because he expects to publish it in the near future. And he's going to supplement that with the type of cancellations used by the ship. In other words, in essence, he's talking about generating what we would today call a postmark catalog. Some of you may know the name C.S. Williams or Charles Summerwin Williams. His dad, was the guy who 
salvaged the Naval Savings covers that we see so many times today. His dad was Admiral Williams. He salvaged those Navy Savings Bank covers, gave them to his son. His son learned about class uh, cancels. And through the years, I bet you almost everyone here on this call now owns a Navy Savings Bank cover, at least one. This is page two of that letter. And here he's talking about tracings of cancellations, talking about his classification system that we completed soon. And this is again, October, 1928. You can see he's drawn a very nice drawing of what he calls a fancy cancellation. Uh, it's USS McLeish. And as always in the right-hand bottom, what have you got to trade? And he mentions some ships that he has, the Washington, New Jersey, Ohio, so on and so forth. So he's always looking for a trade. And these are some of his tracings. USS uh, Pennsylvania tracing, 1911 on the top. At the bottom, a neat cancel. I've never seen the cancel. Second group, US Torpedo Flotilla, Atlantic Fleet at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. So a couple of neat artifacts from way back when. January, 1929, a letter from Losey to C.S. Williams. And he says, his classification will be short and simple yet will furnish a type number by which we can let each other know what we have without writing a long description of each cover. So you can see where he's headed. And a month later, in the American Philatelist Journal, February 1929, his article comes out. U.S. Navy ship cancellations. Simple title. His byline is simply Dr. F.E. Losey. No, no recognition that he's in the Navy, just Dr. Losey. In this article, he shows his classification system. And here we see what he's called a type one through a type six. Got a little writing on the right describing some of them, some of the details about them. Third page of the article, we see he's got the type seven, eight and nine cancels. And similar to the Dr. Evans article, he's got a little bit of information on the survey of these cancels down at the bottom. Very near the bottom, we can see he had 117 examples dated 1919 or later of a type three cancel. And we also see that he's got the variant letters. We see 3S, 4C, 6E, 6F, so on and so forth. He's got a good little illustration of different cancels. You see most of the types here. We also see some of the fancy cancels. There's that McLeish cancel that he drew in one of his letters. Very nice, fancy Raleigh cancel. Um, while he doesn't denote them on this page as type F, previous page, he had listed a survey that he called type F. So he's actually come up with the type F term at this point in time. This is the last page of his article. Eddie thanks some of the people whose names we will all now know, Dr. Evans, William Lester, C.S. Williams, the Harry Conweiser, the guy who discovered when the cancels were authorized aboard ships. And he thanks Albert Gorham, a very famous name in first day covers. And on this page is a listing of his key letters to variations. So he went the opposite direction of Dr. Evans. Dr. Evans was giving variations type numbers. Losi has come up with just the 10 type numbers, but letters but then further define that type that's with a descriptor. And if you look at this listing and you look at what we just saw for his article, it is very, very similar to what we would see today if we pull up a Losi classification system. So within a few months or a few years of him starting to collect cancels, he came up with a system that has survived almost a hundred years. We're still using it today. 
So I, I have to admire the guy. You know, the, I, again, if we look at that Evans system, don't think it ever would have lasted, but the Losey system has lasted this are darn near a hundred years right now. He was obviously proud of what he'd come up with. He reprinted the article it is with his own money. This is one he sent to C.S. Williams. Uh, you can read what he's written to see it. Mr. C.S. Williams compliments Francie Losey, Francis E. Losey. And in this case, he did denote that he was a Lieutenant Commander in the Navy. Here's a page three from a three page letter that he'd written to uh, C.S. Williams, March, 1929. And you can see he's listed ships and the cancels that he knows existed for those ships. For instance, the uh, USS Wyoming, he's listed a three, a six and eight and a Z1, which I'm not quite sure what that is. I think that's a typo of some sort. And then he's got some handwritten information about other ships added to the list. March of 29, this is a month after the article came out. Again, he writes to Mr. Williams. He sort of apologizes that a letter was lost in a pile of papers, but he mentions getting some covers back from the USS Martha Washington and the Galveston which were two additions that he'd put on that previous letter, handwritten additions. Kind of interesting, he used some burial stationery here. This is uh, showing his doctor's office in Philadelphia, where he specialized in diseases of the ear, nose, and throat. Now he's crossed that out, and he's put his Cornell Avenue home address on here. Uh, also interesting, upper left-hand corner, he notes the office hours for 7 to 6.30. So if you kind of think about it, I, again, I can admire the man. He was working, he was a doctor, he was in the Navy, he was a collector, and he still had time to come up with all this stuff. Here's an interesting piece of correspondence. While he was busy working on a classification system, C.S. Williams was working on trying to come up with a pricing system. And he came up with a god awful complicated system of pricing covers. And that formula is what you see here for the different columns. So his columns included the year. That was a factor that based on the year of the cancel that was worth so much. The type of cancel, the port name, if the ship was out of commission, in other words, is it still an active ship or long gone? How many tons was the ship? And that sort of relates to obviously the bigger tonnage, the bigger crew, the bigger crew, probably more, more covers, uh, a census of covers. So how many known examples, whether it was a US cancel or not. And so on that first line, he's factored in, looks like uh, three different factors to come up with a cost of four and a quarter for this particular New Jersey cover. And if you look at all the scribbling and notations on the right, you can see there's $23 and, and uh, eight cents worth of covers here, which in 1929 is a fair amount of money. Uh, the reverse of this letter has a handwritten note by Losey that says, I like clear cancellations. The color or date doesn't make much difference to me. But he wants good clear cancellations. Uh, another letter to Dr. Williams, uh, Miss, sorry, Mr. Williams from Dr. Losey. Particular stationary does denote that he's in the Navy and that he's a Lieutenant Commander. This is March of 1929. He's discussing unique cancels that we call type Fs. And he's talking about how he's gonna have to modify his system already. He's gonna need to add the parcel post killers and a few other things to his system. And again, those are things which we see in a system today. He discusses in this very letter, not including his naval affiliation or rank in publications, and he doesn't note it when he sends for covers. A letter to him from C.S. Williams, 
returning some covers. So they must have done some swapping or trying to sell some covers in March 1929. Uh, this letter happens to mention a cancel that I know some of you may know it. It's the submarine fleet cancel that was used aboard the USS Seagull in Hawaii. And he talks about the USS Pittsburgh Asiatic fleet cancel, which some of us may know. Here's a nice letter from Losi uh, to Mr. Williams, again, March of 1929. So just within the past three, four slides, we've seen several full length letters that he was writing to other people. This one's interesting because in the upper right, it denotes that he's an APS member, that he has collecting interests of Jamaica, Caracal, French Oceana, unused, and US Navy ship covers. And to recognize his French Oceana interest, here's a cover that was sent to him by somebody, French Oceana stamp, sent while Losey was aboard the Trenton, so I would date this around 1925. A letter discussing that very complicated pricing formula with C.S. Williams, April 1929. Uh, the letter mentions a USS Aphrodite, but not having any duplicates. Uh, if we look in the catalog today, Aphrodite cancels are rated R2 and R3, very scarce. There is a sales list and he's used that formula to determine pricing for some covers that he's interested in selling, April 1929. Again, $21.59 worth of covers, April 1929. And if we think about what happened a little bit later in 1929, it was the Wall Street crash. So $21, again, to me seems like a significant amount of money. If you remember the tracing I showed from the Atlantic Fleet Torpedo Flotilla, here he's got that cover for six bucks. So actually, you know, six dollars for a cover back then was probably pretty expensive. A uh, letter to good old Mr. Williams, April 1929. He's questioning that uh, pricing calculation. He's offering a Mayflower cover with a green cancel. I happen to have one of those covers. I just put a picture of it here on the left. He's quibbling over some of uh, the pricing for a USS Wheeling cover, uh, priced out at nine and a quarter. Uh, today, those cancellations are rated as R1. So maybe the nine and a quarter was, maybe that wasn't a bad price back then. He's got a list of duplicates he's sending to people. This one happens to mention a Vega green cancel. And again, I have that cover shown up in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, of the cancellations in this small list, there's 31 cancellations here. 10 of them today are rated R1, 2, or 3. So he had some pretty good covers today, but we would call very good covers today. Other correspondence with C.S. Williams. Uh, in this case, he used old fraternity stationary. And in the upper left, you can see that Losey was actually the secretary for the fraternity when he was going to school. This addresses that he's got a number of covers from the teens, which now shows that not only is he sending for covers, but he's trying to get older covers. So he's really getting, getting into the hobby. And here's a cover to C.S. Williams that he was writing. Some cards that he's sending to other collectors, letting them know what covers he has for sale or for trade. A very nice registered cover from the USS Nokomis to Losi. Navy Day, 1930, a couple Marine cancels, interesting cancellations, the USMC Constabulary Port-au-Prince and USMC Cape Haitian. Navy Day, aboard the battleship Oklahoma, 1931. And no presentation will be complete without at least talking about the system and showing you some samples. So these, 
This is the system Losi developed in 1921-29, a type one through a type nine, along with a type F and his variations. A type one, it's a hand cancel, name of the ships normally at the top of the cancellation, four narrow bars, a couple of nice covers here, 1908 USS Philadelphia cover, uh, 1911 receiving ship at Mare Island, USS Independence. Type two cancel, similar to the type one, but now the name of the ships at the bottom and the bars are spaced a little bit wider. And one that we all know very well, I think, is the type three. And hand cancel, three bars. A uh, couple of nice covers. USS Humphreys is an R1 rated cover. Uh, the bottom, USS uh, Pittsburgh, Asiatic fleet. Losi had a type four cancel. We don't know about that today because that was a cancel that was eliminated. But when he was coming up with this system, he probably didn't realize how many ships actually had a Type 4. Today, we know there were only four ships that had this. The Type 4 had the words uh, branch of the New York Post Office in the cancellation. So since there were only four of those, later on, the USCS decided to eliminate the type and just call that a variation of a Type 3 cancel but this would have been what Losi would have called a type four. Type five, another one familiar to most of us. Hand cancel, narrow bars, name of the ships up at the top in general in most cases. And the type six, again, a hand cancel, but a little bit different. This is the one that has the uh, football shaped killer oval. This is in the USS Scorpion, 1927. And if you look at who this cover to, it's to the William Hornbeck. He's the film editor who wrote the article I showed you earlier. And if you know anything about old movies and movie studios, you may recognize the name Max Senate Studio in LA. There was the Type 7 machine cancellation. This one from the Battleship California. A Type 8. We often call a flag cancellation in a machine cancel. Uh, USS Saratoga, this is one of 100 copies, so fairly scarce cancel. And then the Type 9, or the double ring, I think, as Lori mentioned earlier in the meeting. Normally used for registered mail or money order business, but a lot of ships used it as their canceling device in the 1920s. This is a fairly scarce cancel, one of 10 known, USS Overton. And then the type F, and F was kind of the catch all for cancels that just didn't fit anything else. They were somewhat unique. They didn't fit any other particular design. So they became known as a type F. And you can see these are both type Fs. They look nothing like each other, but they also don't look like anything from the type one to type nine cancels. A couple of scarce cancels. Top one is the USS Saboni, one of 100, and the bottom is the USS Raleigh, one of 10, 10 known. As I mentioned, we continue to use the LOSI system today. And over the years, we've gone from the type nine, we've added 10, 11, 12, and 13, and a type P provisional. As LOSI was talking about, he would add the post parcel post killers, straight line cancels. We've since added some others, including postage meters. We've added some additional variations. As I mentioned, we eliminated the type four, but pretty much what he did in 1929 is what we use today. It's, it's been changed very little. Another of his covers, suffering the same fate that some of us do today. In this case, he sent off for USS Goff, but he learned that the ship was out of commission. So he ended up with some nice auxiliary markings noting that the ship was out of commission. 1931. 1931 Saratoga cover. Uh, show the back in this case, on the left-hand side of the back, 
you'll see a rubber stamp that says Chester Nolson, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And Nolson is a guy who bought the Losey collection at one time. And so Nolson stamped the covers he kept with this rubber stamp. Nelson did something else too, and I forgot to mention it earlier. If you look at the upper cover, upper right-hand corner, there's a marking. And Nelson had some sort of marking system that he used that described or denoted something about covers. I don't know what the markings mean. I've never seen it published, but uh, you'll see those markings. And again, they're pencil and I leave them because I know who did them. I don't know what they mean, but I know who did them. Losey was a member of the North Bay Stamp Club. Uh, you, and you might say, oh, North Bay Stamp Club, okay, that's some local club in the Vallejo, California area. Well, it was more than that. It was actually a national stamp club. There were a number of people in it who collected naval covers. Walter Crosby was a member. Losey was a member. So some of the big names in early naval cover collecting were first in the Naval Stamp and the North Bay Stamp Club before USCS even came along. This is 1931. You may remember USCS was uh, formed in late 1932. Roy Sherman was the secretary and he would take his monthly newsletters that he would send out and he would go down to the Mare Island Naval Shipyard, take them to a ship and ask the ship to cancel them and mail them. So that's how this one has a Hinder, USS Henderson cancel on it. And this cover also has some markings from Nolson. Uh, type five denotion down in the lower right. And there's a circle halfway up the cover and there's a cutoff circle up at the top of the cover. Again, I don't know what those mean, but those meant something to Mr. Nolson. Nice USS Kittery cover from, from Losey. This one includes a little sticker that shows that he was a member of the International Postal Marking Society. So obviously very interested in cancellations at this time. Uh, another one, I'll show this one because it's addressed in Olson. And to emphasize that naval covers wasn't the only thing Losey was interested in. Here's an article he wrote about the overprinted stamps of Haiti, 1902 issues in an American philatelist. And one of his covers, an airmail cover with Haiti postage on it. Now, sadly for Dr. Losey, in May of 1932, he was admitted to the very hospital as a patient, the hospital he'd been working at. After several unsuccessful operations, he passed away five months later, August 28, 1932. This is his death certificate. It says he died of, with multiple abscesses and died of septicemia, which is a blood poisoning. Uh, Losey would be buried in Arlington Cemetery. This is a obituary out of the Waukegan News. and the obituary out of the APS journal. A very nice write-up. The philatelic world has lost one of its most active and enthusiastic members. One of its most promising young men in the death of Dr. Francis Losey. Always full of energy and bubbling over with enthusiasm, he was a constant source of stimulation for those who were associated with him. Pioneer in the collection of battleship postmarks. He studied stamps of Haiti with Dr. Evan blah, blah, wrote the article that we just saw, The Overprints of Haiti. And it concludes, men of Dr. Losey's type were all too few and he's mourned by a large circle of friends. And I think this is a very fitting obituary. It seems to fit everything that I've discovered about the man. I'm sure he was full of enthusiasm. I'm sure he was a constant source of stimulation. We can kind of see that from his letters. This is his tombstone at Arlington. And he wasn't forgotten in the collecting world. This is a cover two years after his death, canceled aboard of the destroyer Brooks. 
and it notes in the Killer Barriari, Lieutenant Commander Losi, 1889, 1932. I mentioned the sale of his collection. Uh, his collection was sold at auction in December 1938. So six years after his death, it was sold by a Eugene Klein at auction. And the write-up for the auction notes that there were many 19th century naval covers sent via the US Consul, sent via the Naval Lyceum. It included Shenandoah and Los Angeles dirigible covers a lot of last day of commission O-class and R-class subs, very strong in registered naval covers, strong in Army of Expeditionary Force World War I covers, and early 20th century navals. So it sounds like Losey had quite a collection. As I mentioned, Chester Nolson bought that collection, 1938. He bought it with plans to break up the collection, which he did. He kept much of it, but he also broke it up. And people have asked me how I have the material that I've shown you here today. So some of the papers and letters were purchased from Nolson by Frank Hoke. They know the name Frank, he passed away a few years ago, USCS member for a long time. I purchased the papers and some covers from Frank myself. And I've kind of gone on a mission <laughs> Yes, I, if I see a Losi cover, I buy it. So I've found a lot of covers uh, on eBay and Paul, Paul Huber keeps an eye open for me. So that's how we've got to what we have today. And that is the end of my presentation. And I am going to stop the recording now.